Psalms 127 and 1. Will you get this stand to your feet? We stand just to give reverence to the word of God. And then after we make you see it, unless otherwise, God goes speak otherwise. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Thank you. Hallelujah. And they say, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wait, but in vain. You may be seated, praise God. Hallelujah. When I read this word, I was so excited about it. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, the world is trying to redesign order. I said, the Lord told me, the world is trying to redesign order. Instead of following the rule of God, they try to make God follow their rule. You ever wonder why, why, why certain groups fight so hard? They, they lobby. They, they go to Congress and, and they lobby the congressmen, the one you have voted in. They lobby them to get them to uh, vote their way or try and put whatever weight they have, whatever desires they have in their heart, whatever they think seems to be right. They try to get that into law. You ever wonder about that? And the reason why is because they believe that once it is law, we will accept it. Because scripture say to obey the law of the land. Jesus even say to, uh, uh, he say, give unto Caesar that which is Caesar. And give unto God that which is God, right? If, if you look in the book of Mark, the 12th chapter, verse 17, I, I just want you to make sure that you see what I'm seeing. Hallelujah, Mark. Uh, 12 and 17 say, render unto Caesar. And Jesus answered the same, you know, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. And they marvel at this. And then you go to Acts, the fifth chapter, at verse 27 and 29, and it, any kind of paraphrase to say, must we obey God rather than men? Hallelujah. So no matter what they're lobbying to try to get in place to law, we still, hallelujah, have to obey God. Amen. First Corinthians 10 chapter verse 23 tells us, hallelujah. 10 and 23, all things are what? Oh. Are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things, what? All things what? Edified. All things edified not. In other words, just because it's lawful doesn't mean it's helpful. Just because it's lawful doesn't mean it builds up. So no matter what they're lobbying for, there are certain groups are trying to control everything. If they have a certain perversion, if they get it in the law, now you have to obey the law. Because the Bible says God has set up those that are in authority. But tell somebody, God is the rule, not the exception. Not the exception. Oh, I need to talk to somebody like that. I said, God is the rule and not the exception. That's my title for the day. God is the rule and not the exception. So let's look at Psalms 127 and 1. And I'm going to, I'm going to deal with this one scripture and we're going to go home, amen? It said, accept the Lord. In other words, other than the Lord, exception means that it does not follow the rule. So they couldn't be talking about God as an exception. God got to be the standard. He said, except the Lord, other than the Lord that built the house, other than the Lord that established the house, other than the Lord that sets up the house, guess what? They build it in vain. He said, the Lord has to build a house. What is the house? The house is you. The house is the church. If the Lord build you, if the Lord build you, then he's building his church. And once the church is built, the family can be built. And once the family is built, guess what? The community is built. See, we got this stuff out of order. We're trying to get the community right, and the house ain't right. We're trying to get the community right, and we ain't right. So he said, except the Lord, build your house. Tell somebody, build your house. Through the Lord. 
Say, Lord, have your way. And fill me up. So he's not the exception. He is the rule. I don't know about y'all. I'm glad God is the rule. Because y'all know how some people have made some rules and then changed the rules? Or they put exception in there? Because you got seniority at the job, they give you exception, even though they got a vacation policy. And the new people got to follow the policy, and the older people don't have to follow the policy. Because they are exception. But to God, he is not an exception. He is the rule. So except the Lord build the house, except he established it, except he set it up, the community, the family, and the church is going to be messed up. In other words, God is going to build a house or build you because he want to make sure the footing is right. See, if you don't have a good foundation, whatever you build on is eventually going to fall. I wish somebody would shout with me right now. We almost finished. If you would just shout with me just a little while. Hallelujah. Get in the footing right. Tell somebody to get the footing right. Get the footing right. You've got to get the footing right. The first thing they want to establish is the foundation. Once they get that foundation, hallelujah. Because if you got cracks in your foundation, eventually your house is going to fall. I thought someone needed to hear that. So he said, except the Lord build a house, except the Lord get your foundation right, it's not going to fade, it's not going to establish, it's not going to stay, it's not going to be permanent. And, and eventually, it may look good for a little while. But later on, y'all see someone had a house and, and, and it was looking good, and then later on, and, and it fell down, you like, what happened to it? Because the foundation was not established right. So we got to make sure we're built up. We got to make sure we're set up. We got to make sure that God is building our house. Then he goes on to say, they labor in faith. In other words, they talk. They work. In other words, you may have ideas to change your community. You may have ideas to change your family. You may even have ideas to change yourself. But if it's not established on God, Hallelujah. You are calling in vain. In other words, hallelujah. You know, it looks like it's working, but it ain't working. Because he said they labor in vain. What is vain? Vain means to be empty, worthless. That's a falsehood. Because a lot of times we think our ideas, hallelujah, it's going to change everything. But if it's not an idea from God, it's still in vain. I'm not saying you're not working. I'm just saying your work is not working. Somebody should shout right there. Amen. I say you're. I'm not saying you're not working because we can be doing things to try and change our community, and, and you're working on it, but it's not working. You ever heard someone say, "I don't know why this thing is not working"? No matter what I try to do, it's still not working. Because it's up on the wrong premises. See, your premises or your assumption, your proposition, your thesis, your argument, your theory, or your undertaking. When your premises is false, guess what? Your conclusion is false too. So you got to make sure, hallelujah, that you're on the right premises. The right premises means that I'm established on God's word. How many of y'all know that God's word don't fail? If I'm going to establish anything, I'm going to make sure it's established on God's word. I got a couple in here about to get married in a couple of months. Praise God. And they said, we want some counseling. Because I, I can't marry nobody without counseling. Hallelujah. Why? Because I want to make sure the foundation is established. I want to make sure their relationship is on a good footing. Why? Because people come into your life and try to mess up your marriage. Oh, hallelujah. Any married couples up in here? That have some people, hallelujah, might be family or friends. Hallelujah. You don't even know who hating on you sometimes. But when you're on that right foundation, when you're on that right foot, because guess what? In marriage, there's going to be some argument. If y'all be honest, some of y'all argue before y'all got here. Out your amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. But when just because we argue don't mean we don't love each other. Hallelujah. Just because we get mad at each other don't mean we don't love each other. So sometimes me and that beautiful woman don't see eye to eye. Hallelujah. But that don't stop me from loving her. Because I know this too will pass. God I've been mad at somebody. But then they come and do something else and they'll be like, oh man, I don't know why I love you so much. Hallelujah. Because you're on a good foot. Tell somebody to get on a good foot. Hallelujah. When you establish it on God's word, you're on the right foundation. And I, as I begin to look at this word, he said, except the Lord, uh, they build, they labor in vain that build it. In other words, so the thing will get built. You can marry someone, yeah. You'll be married, but if you're not established on God's word, it may not last. I say me because there are some relationships, they'll stick it out no matter what. Y'all have seen some abusive relationship before, right? Y'all gonna be like, I don't know why you don't leave that man. I don't know why you don't leave that woman. But they stay there. Hallelujah. They think struggling with someone, hallelujah, is helping them. Sometimes you're hindering folks. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna get too many amens right there. Hallelujah. But I want to make sure we're on a good foundation. Hallelujah. When I first got married, I mean, before I got married, I went to counseling sessions. Because I'm going into something I never went into before. I've been in a relationship, and guess what? I messed those up a lot of times. Y'all be honest, y'all did too. Hallelujah. Jump from one relation to the next relation. But once you get into marriage, you're committed. We do this before God. If you don't want God to be in it, don't get married in the church. Can I get an amen there? If you don't want God in it, don't get married by a priest. Or a pastor, at least. Because you're asking God, I'm doing this before God. Hallelujah. So I want to make sure God Hello and God bless. We pray that this message is encouraging and motivating you forward. At this time, we would like to invite you to come worship with us. We have services every Sunday beginning at 11 a.m. On Tuesdays, we have prayer and luncheon, which begins at 11 a.m. and ends at 1 p.m. This is a free event held each Tuesday, which allows anyone to come in and receive prayer, fellowship, kingdom literature, and a fresh hot meal. Did I mention that this is all for free? There's no registration, application, or anything. We also have Bible study every Wednesday beginning at 7.30 p.m. Although we would love to see you in person, we also have the option of Facebook Live for those of you who are unable to attend physically. Now, for the upcoming events. We are currently enrolling students for our after-school program, which begins on Monday, September the 16th. The program will run from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., and it's for students age 3 to 17. Also, this month has five Sundays, and at Renew Faith, every fifth Sunday is Pack the Pew slash Youth Sunday. Service begins at 11 a.m., and we need your help in packing those pews. Lastly, on October 25th, Apostle Charlie Jenkins will be the guest speaker at Word of Life Ministries' first church anniversary. We are so excited about that. Services will begin at 7.30 p.m., so mark your calendars and come out and worship with us. Now, somebody say, renewed faith in motion. Yes, renewed faith is in motion. You all are doing an awesome job at subscribing, so keep it up. Tell someone, it's not just a YouTube name, it's who we are. And we are indeed in most motion. So continue listening, liking, commenting, and sharing the messages. We greatly appreciate you. Lastly, in order to reap a good harvest, we must sow good seeds. And renewed faith is indeed fertile ground. So we would like to encourage you to sow into our ministry via one of the methods below. We would also like to extend this opportunity for you to not only listen to the message, but to also purchase a copy of the message for someone you love, or even yourself. God is definitely working through His service, so please reach out to us via one of the methods below to get your message today. Like I said earlier, it's not just a name, it's who we are. We are renewed faith and we are in motion. Again, God bless you, we love you, and pray that heaven shines upon you. Now, back to the word. Then he goes on and say, Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh 
but in vain. Oh, I'm about to shout right there. Hallelujah. In other words, the city of Allendale, he's saying right here, you, Allendale can't be kept. Even though people are watching, we know stuff going on. We know things are wrong. We see it. We are alert. We are aware of it. But guess what? We are awake. But we can't do nothing about it. Because it's all in vain. Unless it's established on God's word. So the Lord began to take me back out of these two uh, examples he gave. He, he showed me something. He said, first thing is, the order is, you must get the house right. Tell somebody to get the house right. Get the house right. Because he put in the order of putting the house first before you build a community. So we can't skip that order. Remember, God is the rule and not the exception. So he took me back. He said, you remember they were building Babel, that city? Hallelujah. They were building that tower. Hallelujah. They came together to try and build something. And there was only one other car. But they was doing it. They was laboring. It was showing the fruits of it. But it was in vain. Y'all remember Jericho? Y'all heard of preaching about Jericho before? What y'all know about Jericho? The walls. Did they have watches on the wall? Yeah, the people sat there and watched them fools walk around the building. They were like, look at them. There's some crazy folks right there. We're supposed to be a scared of them. And they're just walking around, walking around the city, walking around the city. And they thought just because they was alert. They thought that just because they was conscious. You know how people say, you got to be woke now. Y'all know conscious, right? Or what's going on? Those watching was conscious, but yet still they couldn't keep the city. Hallelujah. In other words, if God wasn't keeping that city, it was going to fall. We find another example where they had some beggars and some blind and some lames on the outside of a city. Hallelujah. They put, a, they put them in a, a siege for a long period of time, but yet still God kept that city. Even though the Syrians was coming up against it, they could not prevail. Because God was keeping the city. If we get this right, hallelujah, we can change the whole atmosphere of this time. But we got to start with us. Our house is all messed up. Our community ain't got no choice but to be messed up. Y'all calling somebody a rat and a snitch and all that. Hallelujah. But I'm just telling the truth. If you don't want to, you need to tell the truth about don't do it around me. I don't know how we swap this thing up to make you feel bad about telling the truth. The worst thing is a snitch. The worst thing is a rat. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. In our word, I'm going to tell the truth. Don't do it around me. Because when it goes, when it happened to you or your family, you want someone to stand up and tell the truth then. Why can't you tell the truth for somebody else? We want some change, but we don't want to change. Somebody can shout right there. We want change, but we don't want change. So we have we must follow God's design. Tell somebody follow God's design. When you follow God's design, hallelujah, you're following this rule. And you're no longer the exception, you're the standard. Right now, we think that the exception is the standard. Because the Bible, you know, uh, the world tells us we can do all these things. So we feel like this is the right thing. And when God tells us to do something different, we think we're going against the staff. But Peter got up in the middle of a council meeting. He said, you know what? I'd rather obey God than obey me. And sometimes going against the green is not the easiest way to go. Y'all been in a crowd before? And you had to walk the opposite way? What happened? You got hit, push, kick. You got some mean looks at you. The stinky eye. Come on. The duck lips. Come on. You had all these looks at you, right? And then you also had some friction. See, what happened is we don't like friction. We don't like for nobody to come against us. We like to go with the flow of stuff. Oh, I'm going to shout by myself. Praise God. Hello. We got too many people that call themselves Christian going with the flow. I don't know about you, but I'm not a trip wood. I'm not going 
not just going to be on the river and just let the river take me wherever you want to go. God called us to turn the world upside down. That's right. Hallelujah. Or in other words, right side up. We got to change things. But we got to follow God's rule in doing it. Because sometimes God will let you suffer through some bad stuff. But it's okay. He's going to work it out in the end. How many people know that God's going to work it out in the end? I don't know about you, but whatever God is doing is not going to end up empty. Amen. It's not going to be worth less. In right. anything, it's going to be worth more. Yes. Somebody just shout right there. Amen. You mean all this hell I'm catching right now? It's going to be worth more later. Because if I suffer with him, yes. I don't know about you, but I'm going to reign with him one day. Because he's building a house, not me, my man, hey. He's establishing my heart. And God needs for our heart to be established. So he said, accept the Lord building. Other than the Lord. Because mom can try and build your heart. Daddy can try and build your heart. You know, your, your family and friends can try and build your heart. But they're building this in vain. They're doing the work. It's just not work. Hallelujah. So the next time someone comes to tell you something and it goes against God's stand, ain't working. I know it ain't working. I done went down that road before. I'm going to do it God's way. I may suffer a little bit, but I'm still going to do it God's way. Because I'm trusting God in the middle of that. God is building my house. How many of y'all are, are, are builders in here? Y'all know how to build a house? Oh, we got a couple here that know how to build a house. So if you don't know how to build a house, would you go build your house? Why not? Huh? If you don't know how to build a house, would you go build a house? You might build somebody else, but would you build your own house? I remember the first time my pastor, pastor, preached a sermon. And he said this man, hallelujah, was a contractor. And he was building a house. And he was contracted to build a house. So he went and got all this cheap labor. He got cheap uh, material. And, and, he, and he just put the house together. It looked good on the outside, but on the inside, it was messed up. They couldn't see inside the walls. And then when he got finished, he cut all the cost. He was saving money. And then he got up to the man who had uh, contracted him out. And he gave the man the key and said, here's your house. And the man turned around and said, no, this is your house. Uh -huh. <laughs> You think he was happy? Why? Because he know what was inside that house. Hallelujah. See, we build our house. Hallelujah. It's going to be vain. We know we messed up, but let God work in your house. God must be the rule and not the exception. And when God is the rule and not the exception, things will prosper. I said, Lord, is this it? Is this what you want? Because he said we must change the standard. We must revert back to God. There's things God is trying to work out of your life right now. He's trying to build you up. He's trying to set you up. He's trying to establish you. But you are fighting against the master design. It's like me, who's a layman. I mean, I don't know nothing. And, and I go to an architect, and he gives me a plan and blueprint. And then I start scratching out his lines, removing some stuff, pulling and pulling out the uh, what they call the low bearing wall. You know, moving the stuff, and then and, and they say, "All right, I want you to fix it like this." And then he goes and builds it. And when it falls down, I can't blame the architect. I got to blame me. See, we want to point fingers at everybody else. But never look at ourselves. Yeah. I thought those would go a little bit better than this. You, you know, when I was uh, studying this word of opinion, that was jumping and shot in my head. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it ain't working out the same way. <laughs> but except God do it, except He build it, except He establish it, our community is going to fail. Our family is going to fail. We're going to begin to get frustrated. The 
if our conclusion is this. God is architect. God is design. And if God want to add on to your house, he can do that as well. But we must allow the Holy Spirit to minister to this temple. See, the thing I like about the Holy Spirit, when he comes inside, he checks all your inside. He knows what is out of place. Because all the stuff you put in there before was messing you up. Now he's trying to get it out. You ever watch the Property Brothers? Anybody? Anybody know what that is? The Property Brothers, they, they are two, they, they, I think they're twins, or they might just be brothers. But anyway, they go in these houses, and they pull stuff out, and they redesign it all up, and then when you get finished, you look at, oh man, this is good right here. It doesn't look like it used to. That's how the Holy Ghost works. He'll come into your body, he'll come into your temple, and he'll begin to transform some things. What you thought you need, he ended up removing that. See, sometimes we don't know what we need until somebody come and remove it. Hallelujah. Me and my wife want to add on our house, right? Hallelujah. And I'm up there trying to make plans to do it. And I told my wife, I said, I think we need some help. Because what I think will fit won't work. See, he'll come in there and say, you know what? We need to remove this and that and take this out. And then when you look at it, he was like, no, I don't know about that. But when he finished with it, see, y'all looking at the product now. Go ahead, go ahead. What about the final product? Yeah. Hallelujah. In other words, what you are now ain't what God is going to have you later. If you allow his word to operate in you. Yeah. You can be messed up now, but God got a better plan in store for you. God about to do something miraculous in your life. You mean to tell me if you just take this bad attitude out of me? How do you just remove this bad attitude out of me? You mean I can be a better father? I can be a better husband? I can be a better granddaddy? Hallelujah. I was telling Ella Pitt. He said, Pastor, you know one of the things I like about you is that you always talk about how the Holy Ghost is always dealing with you. He's always working on you. Hallelujah. I, I, when the Holy Ghost deal with me, he tried to make me a better name. Amen. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost deal with me, when I'm talking to family members, he tried to make me a better brother. He tried to make me a better uncle. Yeah. Hallelujah. He tried to make me a better son and a better father. Yeah. We should always be improving if God is building our house. Yeah. But if you're not allowing God to work on your house, don't complain about the dwelling you're in. I want a better match, but you don't want God to work on it. You want a better job, but you don't want to have a better attitude on your job. You know, there was a time before I became a supervisor that I was probably the worst employee on the, on, in, the, in the company. I would sleep on the machine. And then I had a partner with me. He was just working. You know, that, that's why they say evil communication corrupt good man. You got to be careful who you're around. And let me just tell you this short story. I, I, I was working at a particular facility, and, and we had us a lift, and it would take us up high. It would take us like two, uh, two or three stories up in the air. So we was way above everybody, and we would go up there and go to sleep. And we were working Thursday. Now, I'm working with this guy, and I'm doing the job. And after a while, he stopped taking us and said, don't worry about it. We'll get this done. And, you know, he's been working there for about 20, 30 years. He, he knew the pattern of it. And then one day, he fell asleep in the supervisor car. And I was asleep on the other side. But he couldn't see me. Thank you, Jesus. Here, hallelujah, I'm following the example of, a, of one of the worst employees, and I become one of the worst employees. But then when I got saved, when Jesus came to my life, hallelujah, I started changing my behavior. I started changing how I do things. I said, you know what? I got to work as a to the Lord. Amen. And when that attitude changed, guess what? I changed, and then I went from the worst employee to becoming one of the better supervisors. Except the Lord build the house. Yes, Your building is in vain. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Give me something quiet, Robert.
Praise God, my wife. We must establish the house according to God's rule. We must set it up according to God's rule. When you set it up according to God's rule, it will last. I say that because when I used the example of marriage earlier, when me and my wife went through our counseling session, when we hit hard times, we rely on not our words, but God's words. It was the one thing that kept us. Because one of the things that uh, our counselor would say was that there's no divorce in our marriage. Now, he was talking about theirs. But I took that precept and applied it to our marriage. So when we was going through some rough times, hallelujah, I said, we can't put divorce on the table. See, y'all got too many options and not enough God. When you got too many other worldly options, you want to you wanna eventually fall victim to these worldly ideas. But when the option is only God, the Bible says, now let's mean all God ways. And what do you do? He will direct your path. We must build our house according to God's word and God's way. So God is not the rule. God is the rule and not the exception. Nowadays, we think God is the exception. He's always been the rule while he's standing on your feet. I need the Lord to build my house. I need the Lord to establish my house. I need the Lord to come in. Because if he's not in it, I'm on the wrong footing. When the wind blows, when the storm comes, I won't be afraid because I know I'm established on his foundation. If this word has found you in any form or any fashion, if God was dealing in your heart and you try to make God conform to you, Come down and let us pray together. You know, the Lord dropped in my spirit was that, you, you know, there was a time when they, they had the prohibition. You know what the prohibition is? Yes. That way you could not drink, drink alcohol. alcohol legally. Mm -hmm. But then you had some lobbyists that promoted the idea.